Hello, and welcome to the first ever Sadie and Buddy Aviation video. Along with this video, we unveil the Buddy's Aviation History Vlog series. With these vlogs, you can watch as we explore the history of aviation through Kerbal Space Program. This week, we will take a look at the Convair B-36 Peacemaker. So, here we are at the Kerbal Space Center, or as I call it, Cape Cribnaveral. At first glance, the B-36 seems as if it was designed by a child, with its huge size and the fact that it has 10 engines. But this aircraft played a vital role in our nation's defense at the beginning of the Cold War. We'll just run through a pre-flight check. Jebediah, do we have engines? Waha! Alright, do we have fuel? Waha! Snacks? Wait, who put snacks on the list? Oh well, we've already got clearance and are the only aircraft in the area, so let's just take off. Well, I see someone packed snacks. Must have been Bill. Jeb, where is Bill? Oh yeah, he's preparing our other planes for this video. As we begin our takeoff roll, let's go over some of the B-36's history. The Peacemaker's first flight came on August 8, 1946. It was the first truly intercontinental long-range strategic bomber. It was quickly adopted by the Strategic Air Command for its ability to carry nuclear weapons. They used the B-36 for nearly 10 years. Peacemaker could carry up to four times the usable payload of a B-29 Super Fortress. Its propeller-driven engines were Pratt & Whitney R4360 radials, and the jet engines it used were GE J47-19s, which led to the term six turning, four burning. It could haul a crew of up to 15 over 10,000 miles and fly for up to 40 hours. Its four bomb bays were capable of carrying 86,000 pounds of bombs. It could carry the Mark 17 hydrogen bomb and was the only aircraft ever produced that could carry the T-12 Cloudmaker earthquake bomb. Unfortunately, the B-36 met with several obstacles, the first being its actual production. While supposed to be delivered in 1945, the first B-36s weren't delivered to the Air Force until the midway through 1947. Another issue was its engines. Using propeller-driven engines, it quickly became obsolete and no match against the enemy's MiG-15. Also, yet another problem with its engines were the fact that the way they were mounted. As you can see, they are pusher prop engines, meaning they push the aircraft forward from behind. Normal aircraft use tractor engines, which means they go on the front of the wing and actually pull the aircraft along. The 4360 engines it used were meant to be mounted in a normal tractor position, meaning they were on the front of the wing and the carburetor was behind the engine, meaning that at high altitudes it was less likely to freeze up because of the hot air flowing over it from the motor. But being mounted backwards from their normal position, the carburetor was directly in cold wind, meaning they would freeze up easier, which eventually made the pilot have to add more fuel to the mixture, and eventually there was so much fuel in the exhaust that was unburnt that the motors tended to catch on fire, which led the crew members to modify the B-36's slogan to two turning, two burning, two smoking, two choking, and two more unaccounted for. During the beginning of the Cold War, the B-36 was a vital part of our nation's defense. After being used for nearly 10 years by Strategic Air Command, they were eventually replaced by B-52 bombers. But the real reason the B-36 is so iconic is a reason which we will talk about now. The first experiment we will look at is Project Falcon, 
And yes, you're seeing right, that's a jet aircraft hanging from below the B-36. Project Falcon, or Fighter Conveyor, seek to solve the problem of the B-36's vulnerability. At this particular time in the 1950s, the fighter they were using was the F-84 Thunderstreak. Early tests with the F-84 included it being a reconnaissance aircraft, which could be dropped from the B-36 over Russia, sent on a reconnaissance mission, and after its mission was completed, it would reconnect with the B-36 mothership. The reconnaissance F-84 was designated XF-84F, also known as the Thunder Flash. The swept-winged version of the F-84 was called the Thunder Streak. While tested mainly for reconnaissance, the F-84 would go on to later be used as a fighter bomber by the U.S. Air Force. As you can see here, it is quite maneuverable and can even knife edge pretty well. Now here you just see Jeb trying to show off. If we can ever get him to land, we'll move on to the next project. This aircraft is the X-85 Goblin. Seen here is the hook that it used to be attached to the B-36. And there is its mounting platform which it was loaded onto the B-36 with. Expanding on the idea of having a fighter under the bomber, the Goblin was designed to fit either outside of or completely in one of its four bomb bays. While never actually used under a B-36, they were tested underneath an experimental B-29. The last experiment we will look at is a project called Tiptoe. In these experiments, F-84 fighters would connect to the B-36's main wing with connectors in the tips of their wings. This allowed for the F-84's to shut down their engines and save fuel until they were needed. Unfortunately, during tiptoe, Project Falcon was brought to an end. While connected to the mothership, F-84 pilots had to control their aircraft via conventional controls, meaning that for hours on end they would have to help the B-36 fly along. Tests began with electronic versions to fix this, including a small computer that would actually fly the F-84 without pilot input. Unfortunately, the electronics were unreliable and spotty at best. The reason the idea was abandoned was on its last test flight, something went wrong with one of the computers. One of the F-84s nosed over and crashed through the B-29's main wing. After the horrific crash, there were no survivors left. Soon after that, Falcon and all other projects surrounding the B-36 were later abandoned. While many of the ideas did not work out, the B-36 and its experiments became iconic in the scientific and engineering worlds. Aviation is ever-changing and ever-expanding. Thank you for watching this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, go to GlobalAir.com to check out aircraft for sale other aviators blogs and much more you can find the link in the description below there you will also find a link to our blog the main Sadie and Buddy blog post goes up each Wednesday evening other blogs will go up periodically throughout the week get out there and fly thanks for watching